and welcome back to Coffee Talk. I think we are on episode four. Uh, and today I have a good friend with me, and he's probably the chef that I have known the longest here at BGSU. And I will let him introduce himself. I am Chef Jared Dreyer. I'm the executive chef for catering and retail here on campus. I have been uh, working on campus in some shape or form for, oh man, it's 16 years now. <laughs> You're like, so, I want to say that out loud. You know, well, I, well, I was thinking about it. I got so used to saying 15, but now that we're... Now that we're past the middle part of yeah. June, it's 16 years now, so. You've been here like half your life, right? Oh, thank you for, thank you for <laughs> drilling that in. Yes, I oh, have yes, been I here. I just lost my hat. <laughs> I have been here for half of my life. Thank you. Don't mind me, yeah. just losing my hat. Pulled a Jill, it's fine. As you noticed, if you didn't notice with me uh, flying that off, we are wearing fun hats today because uh, Jared has the best collection of fun hats that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite fun hat, Chef? Uh, my favorite fun hat I don't have anymore is the Viking helmet. I wore that. Oh, yeah. I, I wore that for a, a theme dinner over at Caroline Place way back when. And then I proceeded to wear it for the following week. And then it was confiscated from me, like a parent confiscates a toy from a child. And uh, <laughs> do you think it's still somewhere around here? We just no, I think it got thrown out. Um, because once it was once it was swiped off my desk, and you know how I feel about people swiping things off of my <laughs> desk, I I unleashed what I can only describe as a manhunt for that helmet. And that and like I that would be easy to it. find, right? It you would, would be think, easy to find, like. And technically, it covers your hair, so you could wear it while exactly. cooking. Exactly. Well, and, and I did. <laughs> I did omelet Sundays. I didn't. I did an omelet Sunday in a Viking helmet. I'm so bummed. The that only I problem didn't get is I'm so that. tall. Much like with this hat, I have to be weary of the hoods. Otherwise, it'll it'll take it right off of my. Well, head. and you're tall too, so it's even yeah, like, exactly. Oh man. All right. Well, uh, as you can see, we always have a great time together. But we're going to dive into some questions. So Jared and I are also doing this blind, so we have no idea what the other person <laughs> is going to ask each other. So, uh, Chef, I'll let you start. All right. What is something about your job that you didn't expect to enjoy as much as you do? Oh, gosh. So I have a very unique job. Um, a lot of dietitians don't, like, half kind of manage or in the sense of, like, working with chefs or mm -hmm. running the teaching kitchen um, that I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I do. Ooh. I think probably sustainability um, because that was kind of just pushed off onto me. Yeah. And they were, one day they were like, oh, you can uh, be in charge of this student who is in charge of, who does sustainable things for us. And then uh, we implemented the hydroponics. And then after that, it was kind of given to me the duty of doing the green roof and then mm -hmm. just more initiatives. And I feel like, I've enjoyed that way more than I thought because to me at first I was like, oh my gosh, it's just another thing on my plate. And now it's more so I get the creativity and I get to learn a lot while I do it. So I think that would probably be it. Because I knew I would enjoy working with chefs and cooking and doing dietitian things, but I think that's something that I wasn't expecting to do and I, I really enjoy it. So what about you? Do you have anything you never my, thought you would? I never thought I would enjoy teaching as much as I do. Yeah. Yeah, I just didn't think that that was something like and I mean being a chef you're 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 teaching people every day but you're not doing it in such a structured manner as like a classroom setting or or even a class down in the teaching kitchen. Right. You're teaching every day but it's not so structured. I didn't I didn't think I would enjoy teaching because I believe I taught your knife skills. Yeah, when I was in, a when student. When you when you were an yep. undergrad and and all the classes in the teaching kitchen, I didn't think I would enjoy get get that much enjoyment or be or take to it as well as I as I feel I have. And you're that's, very good at it. That's one that's one thing that I didn't think that I would enjoy that has now become something I look I look forward to a great deal. Right. Yeah, you're really good at it and I know the students love it. And yeah, like you said, you're the first chef who ever taught me to cut an onion and who'd know that we who would have known that yes, we'd work together known. now. Here we are. All right. Ooh, okay. What is your biggest culinary pet peeve? <laughs> You're like, which one? How many? <laughs> um, I know that you and Austin talked about it on yours. 
people salting food before they taste it. That bothers me. Um, but I mean, as far as far as like from a from a cooking standpoint, is like I I'm not a fan of like one thing that that I'm really passionate about when I cook is technique. Mm -hmm. Like I love going through the motions of like making soup. I love making soup because it requires, it sounds silly, but it requires a great deal of technique and making sure that your technique is good. You make the best soup. Cause you can tell, you can tell bad soup from good soup. And that's ba It's basically just based on technique. Um, and I don't, one, one thing I don't like is people trying to shortcut that because those those techniques and that like caramelizing onions because you need to de develop a certain amount of flavor is so different from just sweating them or sauteing them and how do you sweat an onion very low heat it's, it's, it's just like so okay. very low heat a little bit that. of salt and what you're looking for is instead of you want it to still be opaque okay when when you're cooking so you so it'll still be pretty solid you're basically sweating the sugar and the liquid out um but yeah pe people trying to take shortcuts and all these all these things you see on facebook and instagram and i mean if it gets more people in the kitchen i guess it's better but all these silly one pot yes things that are a not a not good for you b they're just, it's just like you're, you're side cutting, you're taking so many shortcuts instead of learning how to actually put something together. Yeah, so uh, you saw me earlier, I was getting ready to make cake pops. They're yeah. for my grandma that I'm going to see tonight and um, she loves like coffee and chocolate together. So mm -hmm. I don't have a recipe for that. So I was like, oh, I'll look up um, a coffee chocolate cake. And the first thing that popped up was like one bowl, coffee, chocolate, like five ingredient cake. And I instantly didn't use it. Cause I was like, okay, that can't be nearly as good. And mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Like I get, like you said, there, <laughs> and I mean, there's, there are some things that, yeah, that turn out pretty well. Like I know chef Marissa has done a two ingredient dough with self rising flour and Greek yogurt. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. But I think when you get to shortcutting, learning how to learning techniques for the sake of just shortcutting them. I think A, you're robbing yourself, and B, you're robbing your product. Yes. For or sure. whatever you're producing. Yeah. All right, your turn. Okay. What are some common misconceptions people have when, when looking to start a new diet? Ooh, quick fixes. Um, I think a lot of people, and it's very easy to do. It's a marketing word, mm -hmm. you know, quick fix. And I think a lot of people tend to think, uh, it's a misconception. This is going to work forever. And I tell everyone if diets were meant to work, then why haven't they worked yet? You know, like mm -hmm. there, there hasn't been a single diet that I've heard of that, you know, like Atkins was a phase. You don't really hear about that anymore. Keto is a phase. Intermittent fasting. I think intermittent fasting, if I had to guess, is going to be one that stays around the longest because fasting has been around since forever. Um, but yeah, I think the misconception is that it's a quick fix and <clears throat> that it's healthy. That's the other misconception. People hear the word diet and they think, okay, if it's a diet, it's healthy. And a lot of times it can actually cause you to have even worse relationships with food mm -hmm. um, because it can cause restriction. You become overly obsessive about what you're eating instead of just eating. Maybe you start uh, starving yourself in the sense of, well, I just ate two hours ago. I, I shouldn't be hungry okay, but did you work all day and work out? Yeah, you probably are hungry. Yeah. So I think, yeah, the biggest thing would just be thinking that it is healthy because it has the word diet. So yeah. Okay. What do you think is the most important piece of kitchen equipment to have? And if money wasn't an issue, this is a two-part question. If money wasn't an issue, what would you want to buy for your kitchen? The most important piece of kitchen equipment to have is a good knife. It's step one. <laughs> 50 steps. Um, even, even if it's not like, and I don't mean good as in it doesn't need to be 
an expensive name brand. It doesn't need, you know, just a good solid knife that you can use for anything. Um, I am a bit snobby when it comes to my, my knives because I like certain knives. Yeah, John's, but you're a chuck. John's you're chuckling a... behind the camera. <laughs> you're allowed to knows be snobby. I'm opinion, he knows I'm a, well, I'm opinionated on my knives. Um, well, I remember either you or someone was telling me, like, wasn't your Perry knife over $100 or something? Like, but then you one know of it, them was, yeah. But then you know it's a good knife. And, like, to me, if that's your, your um, career, like, I think that's 100% worth spending the money on mm -hmm. that. Yeah, no, I, and I have no problem spending that much money on a knife. But, um... No, it, it would be one good knife, and as far as what I would get in my kitchen now, I would just like my kitchen to be gas, because I have an electric stove, and electric stoves are horrible. I don't care what anyone says. Um, you can't, and I mean, a lot of people ask me, well, what's the difference between cooking with electric and cooking with gas? I mean, with gas, you have consistent heat, you have high heat. And you don't, because, you know, electric has to turn off at some point. Right. So that way it doesn't melt or doesn't burn out or anything. Whereas gas is consistent. It's just, it's better. Gas is just better. Gas is better. Don't, if, if you have electric, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I hate I my electric stove. You. Yeah. It's, I, I, I say that all the time. I would love for my kitchen to be way bigger, but if I had to choose something, gas stove. Because mm -hmm. my apartment in college, my parents have never had gas stove. So I grew up with electric, then I went to my apartment in college and it had gas. And at first I was kind of scared to use it. And then I was like, this is the best thing ever. Like, mm -hmm. why, why have I never had a gas stove? And then I came back to electric and I was like, nope, yeah. I want gas. I'm going to ask that one a little later. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> if you weren't a dietitian, what would you do? So, like, not related at all to... Not related at all to what dietitian? you currently do. That's hard. Um, I would say a teacher. I thought about being a teacher for a while growing mm -hmm. up. You know, well, at first it was like, I'm going to be a veterinarian. And then I went and observed a veterinarian, and I was like, I do not want to do that. Um, then, yeah, but, like, teacher has always been in the back of my mind, and I think the beauty of my job is that I get to teach in the teaching kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, but if I had to choose, I would probably be uh, an English teacher or a science teacher. And I, I struggled with my words before this, so I feel like probably not English. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be teaching them all the wrong words. Um, English, because of my love of reading. Science, uh, I just think science is like the coolest thing ever. And I love uh, biology. So I, th I think I'd probably be a high school biology teacher. So getting nerdy. What about you? That is actually one of my questions on here. It so, was? Yeah, if you weren't oh a chef. Oh, my goodness. Anything. Great minds <laughs> think alike. I know. What, uh, would, what would I do if I wasn't a chef? Um, gosh, I would probably, it would probably... I always, I always wanted to be a writer growing up, so I probably would pursue that, or something having to do with golf. Oh, cool! One of the, one of those two. If food was totally out of the picture. Cool beans. So. Well, that's that was my next question. So. Okay. So. I'll, I'll let you go. What TV or movie character best describes you? Uh, <laughs> I've, I've had this conversation many times with Kyle. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I've been told that I'm Leslie Nope, um, in the sense of like always wanting to get stuff done, always trying to like do new things. Uh, we'll like stay forever at work. <laughs> Things like that. Um, yeah, but I just... But then I have also... What was the other one? I've never seen the show, but my friends tell me 
that I am like Kimmy Schmidt on The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. I've never seen it. See, and, and I run into the same thing again, and I don't want you to take this as a slight because it's not meant as it. Oh, you're fine. Those two characters are perennially in great moods. Like, all the time. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't trust that. Yeah, and I don't... Everyone and, has bad days. Yeah, and you are not... Like, you're, you're just... You're cheerful. I don't want to say that you're not cheerful and mostly upbeat, but, like, they are overly... Yeah. And no, I agree. The other one I've been told is Jessica Day off of New Girl. But she's kind of the same way. And I think she's... Yeah, but I think that one, for me, I think that one's more relatable because she ebbs and flows. Right. Not saying that, like, Leslie Nope and Kimmy Schmidt don't, but their highs are much higher and it just... Right. Yeah. yeah. No. What about you? Who would you compare yourself to? Uh, I, when I wrote this question, I had this really deep answer. Um... <laughs> I've always I've always been able to relate to uh, the cranky old guys in shows. Uh, Ed Harris from Westworld, like the ones that are like, "Get off my lawn!" Yeah, exactly. Like any any cantankerous old guy in a TV show, I've been on board with. Uh, Cotton Hill from King of the Hill. Um, <laughs> That was like my childhood show growing up. My brother and I would always watch that. Yeah, I no, they, I love that show, and Cotton Hill was always one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, I forgot about that show. Um, yeah, no. If you if you find an old guy in a show, it's typically what because I <laughs> I've always I believe for a long time that I'm a I'm a cranky old man at heart. So I feel so. like yeah. I feel like you'll hit your peak when you're like 65 because yeah. that will be like where you want to be in exactly. life. Exactly. Just... That's I mean that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> my 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 body and my age just haven't caught up to it yet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, it is your last day on earth and I've been asking the other chefs this, but I changed this question up. Before I just asked them what would where would you want to eat? But I'm curious because I had a hard time deciding what would you eat? Where would you want to go for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Like, you could go to three different places. Breakfast would be at my parents' house, and my dad would cook breakfast. Is he good at cooking he breakfast? He makes a mean breakfast. Um, yeah, dad would definitely do breakfast. Um, plus, it's just a nostalgia thing. Yeah. Lunch. The Oaks. <laughs> no, I've enjoyed too many lunches here. <laughs> Um, <laughs> gosh, lunch, that's a good one. What is, what is that place up in Michigan that you talk about that makes, is it by Bell's Brewing? Oh, uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, well, that was one of the spots in my head. Bell, I mean, Bell's Brewing is a, it's a, uh, it's a pilgrimage I make every year, especially <laughs> towards the end of March for Oberon Day. John knows what I'm talking I just, about. I just bought an Oberon mini keg. Uh, and, yeah, incredible. Uh, it's no, the nectar me, of the gods. No, let me tell you, I love Bell's Oberon. This one was skunked. Oh, we, no! We, I know. Kyle and I tried it, and we were like, what is this? This isn't Bell's beer, and we know that they're better than that. So yeah. I was like, I'll let it slide this one time. But, you know, oh, that's heartbreaking. It was, especially... I, I, might, I might have cried. Especially when you work me. up, like... Yeah, you know how good it's gonna yeah. be, and then we're like, "This beer skunked." No, uh, that's a good one. Another thought I had was, uh, there's a bar in Ann Arbor. It's called Ashley's. They've got like 120 beers on tap. Oh gosh. No, no big, no big, no big breweries. All domestics, all uh, all microbrews and imports. Cool. Uh, it's so uh, it's so old and cool, and their food's really good. Um, dinner, we would have to go to Rhode Island to a restaurant called Wright's Chicken Farm. Uh, it is it's such a basic, it's so basic. It's everything served family style. You get, you get roast chicken, french fries, salad, shells and red sauce. Oh my gosh, I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> and it's, it's so basic and it's so New England, but it's so delicious. 
and every time we go to that part of the country to visit friends, like that's we I, I demand that we go. That sounds amazing. And then I proceed to eat my weight in chicken and sides, and then slowly but surely make my way out of there. But <laughs> slowly, make my yeah. <clears throat> no, yeah. So breakfast would be at my folks' house. Lunch, I'd say we'd probably make the pilgrimage to Bell's because you know you need you need a, you need a beer in the afternoon, and then. We go to Rice Chicken Farm for dinner. I love just, it. That's the way it should be. I love it. Oh, this is my last question. Sadness. <laughs> uh, what food or diet trend that is currently exists or that you see coming down the pike do you think has the most staying power? Intermittent fasting, for sure. Um, I've read a lot about it. I've worked with people who have done it. Um, when I was completing my dietetic internship at West Virginia University Medicine, mm-hmm. they had a weight loss clinic and they actually were like doing long-term studies over people who had been doing intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. And it had just started. Um, when I got there, I think they'd only been doing it for a year. So that would be like, what, almost four or five years now. So I'd be curious to see um, like or four or five years since they've been doing it, I'd be curious to see what their results are. But everyone I talked to that when I was counseling there loved it, and they everyone was like, "This is the best I've ever felt. It's so doable." Um, you know, and and to me, it's it's not necessarily you aren't adding supplements, you aren't mm-hmm. restricting like certain macronutrients. Really, it's just really constri- restricting the time that you're eating. And I tell everyone I say this, I think I've said this every single episode that has been brought up, is that we've been doing it since the beginning of time, one with religious Mm -hmm. reasons. The other is people skip breakfast. So if you eat at 6 p.m. and then you don't eat till noon the next day, that's kind of a form of intermittent fasting. You just don't consciously realize that you're doing it. Um, So, yeah, I think that will 100% have the most staying power because it's not crazy. It's kind of a pretty easy concept to follow. So, yeah. All right. Last question on my end. Unless you have any more fun ones you want to ask, we can do those. Uh, what is your favorite thing to teach culinary-wise? Um, I think I have the most fun with... And I, th- I think it's I, th- I think it's different for for each chef, but for me, I have the most fun with like 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 I said earlier, I have the most fun with the things that I'm passionate about. So techniques, so like I will teach the hell out of some soup. Like, I love watching you teach soup. Like I just I because it's something that I care about, or grilling, or biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and gravy. <laughs> um, you know things things that i either i'm passionate about or i enjoy eating that's probably what uh what i'm what i feel i'm best at teaching awesome i think yeah. you're i think you're good at teaching pretty much anything that you're passionate about yeah and i and why well, I, mean, I feel i feel like it's universal if you're right. if you're passionate about it then that's it's easy to see it's easy for the for the guests to see that. Oh yeah, and for if, sure. And I feel if you're passionate about it, you can get other people to be passionate about it, regardless of what it is, mm-hmm. or regardless of their interest in it. Because I know that if if people talk to me about something they're passionate about, and I may not care, it may not be something that I'm even interested in. You could pique my interest and go, well, I mean, if it trips their trigger, then yeah. there's got to be something to it. Now you have my attention. Yeah. So. Cool. Do you have any other fun questions you want to throw out there? No, I don't have any more. I didn't. I didn't write down any more. No, oh, you're fine. Neither did I. I just didn't know. I enjoyed the uh, the TV show character question. I was trying mm-hmm. to think of another fun one to end on. Um. If you could only have one, one, one last dessert. Lemon cheesecake with the uh, raspberries. 
What about you? Plain chocolate ice cream. Mm, good choice. From a certain place? Nope. Just chocolate Just ice cream? Just plain, basic chocolate ice cream. It's the best. Mm. I, don't need, I, don't need, I don't need all that junk in my ice cream. Yeah. I, I don't like it. sprinkles on ice cream. I think it ruins it. Yeah. I just don't, I mean, I don't mind stuff in my ice cream, but, like, if, if, if you're going to tell me, Jared, this is your last moment on, <laughs> on this planet. Get the guys some chocolate enough, ice cream. You have enough cream. time to eat one dessert. <laughs> enough time. Then I'm going to have a big bowl of chocolate ice cream. I love it. Uh, all right. Well, that concludes um, our coffee talk here with Chef Jared Dreyer. And thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions you want to ask us or want us to talk about in upcoming episodes, be sure to comment them or send us an email and we will be sure to do them. Thanks. Thanks.